In your mind's eye, a plenum swings. Its weighted heavy with promised rings dangling at the edge of the rope, blown by the wind and the taking of time. Left, right, left, right, on and on it goes. It's your only source of entertainment here, trapping these drab gray walls. Your salvation, you count the seconds with every swing, and watch them turn to minutes, to hours. Watch the world go on without you while you're stuck in time. Mitchell steps forward. The light barely hits him, and he looks like evil, like an antagonist, deranged, mad. You're scared. A mad Mitchell never meant anything good. His questions had echoed, and your answer had slapped him in sobriety. But now, his words are sharper than knives. You love someone else? He's quiet. His eyes glint maliciously in the dim light. A sudden maniac laugh wraps out of his cold lips. Someone other than me? You lean back as far as you can, whimpering. This room is cold, so cold. Mujo's footsteps crack like gunshots in the silence. I, that's so hurtful, he says softly. I loved you all my life, and you don't even think of giving me the same courtesy? A hand grasps his clothes tightly, right above his chest. That hurts. That hurts so much. I, why? Why are you hurting me like this? Tears are in his eyes. Mutual? They don't deserve you, he rambles. The unhinged look in his eyes sends a spike to your chest. No one else can deserve you. You're too good for them. Don't you see that? You're too perfect for those incompetent, stupid assholes. Why don't you see that? I see it. I'm sorry. I won't do it again, you burst out. You need to get away from here now. The ropes dig into your wrist. They burn like hellfire on your skin. All you think to yourself is, get out, get out, get out, get out now. Mutual stares at you. You don't like that stare. You don't like that stare at all. You don't like it. You promise? I promise. I promise I won't. He doesn't believe you. That makes those pale eyes dull. You love me, right? Uh, yes, I love you. You need to get out. Your eyes dart around for a room, for something, anything that can help you escape. But this room was completely barren. There was only you, him, and a light bulb that swings erratically above your head. Mutual's looks deranged, and with every shift of the light across his features. You couldn't move at all. The ropes are too tight. He sighs in happiness. I'm glad to hear that. A thumb graces your cheek. You flinch away from his touch, but Mutro only tightens his grip on your chin. Your tears overflow. He just wanted out. Ah, uh, don't cry, he murmurs, wiping your tears away. His touch burns. Don't worry, I'll make it all right. Your heart jumps. You peer at him hopefully. Does he mean... His hands wrap around your throat. Your eyes widen in fear as he draws his face closer to yours. He kisses you, squeezing your throat, and mumbles words of love and devotion into your ear. But all you can focus on is the dis distant static of buzzing in your ear. Your limbs jerk as you grasp for air. Lungs screaming in protest as Mutro laughs and laughs and squeezes harder. I don't believe you. I don't want you looking at anyone else, he lashes out. You're hurting me when you look at someone else. Stop hurting me. You're not supposed to hurt me. You can't breathe. You can't breathe. Pank is kicking in. You feel around uselessly, blindly looking for escape. Your health feels like it's about to explode. You can't see. It's dark. You can't hear anything but your heartbeat. There's ringing everywhere, somewhere. Mutual's heavy breathing. You can't breathe. You can't breathe. You don't want to die. You don't want to die. You don't want to die. You don't. Ink stains your vision. You're dead. You don't want to die. A blink, it all fades away. You gasp for air and your head swims and, and it's painful and it's dark. You think, afterlife? Are you dead? But a sensation of cloth open against your cheek and a trembling heartbeat and a strand of hair trickle your arm. You must be alive. That isn't this painful. Hot tears fall down your cheeks. You're alive? Mudro's shoulders shake above you. He's crying. Your throat hurts. Everything hurts. You squeeze your eyes shut, but the ringing never stops. You're alive. I'm sorry, Mutro squeaks out. Voice muffled by your hair, his arms wrapped around your shoulder. He is crying. You cough weakly into his clothes. It feels like lava is sinking down your throat. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hurt you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Please don't be mad at me, I didn't mean it. You're alive. You're alive. You're alive. He didn't kill you, he spared your life. You sob in relief, burying your head into his clothes as hot tears force their way down your cheeks. You're alive. It feels like a miracle. You're staring death in the eyes. You held his hand and fell into the deep abyss, falling, falling, and falling. 
and then suddenly you're not, and you're alive. Montreal spared your life, and you're alive. He continues muttering apologies into your hair, rubbing soft, mooning circles on your skin as he cries. It feels too distant. It feels like you're submerging in water, still drowning. But at least the water in your ears meet your surroundings. This is warm, then it's cold. Your wrists and ankles are free from the soft cut and binds, and he carries you upstairs to his room. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He continues mumbling like a prayer. The sound of water dripping and splashing, and then a gentle, soothing, warm wipes at your face. You flinch away in instinctual fear. Mutual hesitates for a second before turning to rub your face with a cloth. His eyes, your eyes drip to his, but he doesn't meet your gaze. His hands tremble. His touch is so unbelievable soft that you want to cry. You want to go home. You just want to go home. But his touch was so gentle and kind. You didn't even realize you were crying again until you felt him wipe your tears away. Look at him with wide, terrified eyes staring back at you. Are are you still hurt? He asked in panic. His eyes glistening in the light. It must be afternoon. Your muse felt hazy. Orange and gold suit him well. Do you need anything? I'll do anything. Just stop crying, please. You shake your head and reach out to touch his hand. You've been free from your binds. Your wrist still burns, but you're free. Your shoulders shake from the force of your tears. Mutual panics even more, but you smile at him. And through the pathetic comfort is shaky. His fear lifts. Shoulders slant and a sigh of relief except his parted lips as his face crumbles. His hair shadows his expression, but the little sobs escape from his lips clue you on to the turmoil in his mind. You should look away. You should ignore him. Curl up into your own little ball and maybe cry too. A dream about a better reality than being stuck here with a monster of a boy. With wide eyes, an innocent smile and blessed in hands. Your throat screams at you. Your encounter with death by his hands screams at you. But still, your trembling hand rests on top of his. Your words crawl out like lava. It's all right. Watery eyes snap towards you. He blinks and his lip trembles as holding back another cry. He sniffles. I should get you some water. You flush and silently nod, looking away from him. Neutral lingers for a while, letting the warmth of your palms seep through his skin until he has become as warm as you. Maybe that's what this is all about. He just wants you so much that he wants you to be his forever and for you to be him until there's, until any space between you two has dissipated. You're tired. He leaves and returns with a glass of water, helping you take a sip. It feels like honey and brosa to your parched throat, easing the remaining pain until you return to the real world and the press of his hands on you became too painfully real. You're both silent as he wipes your face and arms. It feels like a bomb against your skin. He takes extra care when he reaches for your inflamed wrist. You wanted to cry. Why is he being so nice now when he took you away from your friends and family and just tried to kill you? But he's being so kind, but he didn't actually kill you. He touches your cheek to draw your attention back to him. His palm blessedly warm. You lean unconsciously towards his touch, desperate to have something alive to hold on to. Your brush with death lingers heavily in your mind, a spectacle cool in your spine like ice. It's so scary, his smile brighter than the sun, and like a religion, you find yourself craving for salvation. You swallow and look away, your throat arches and screams, at your, and your body wants nothing but to leave this place and never look back. Mutual kisses your forehead, and the notion becomes too slippery for you to hold on to any longer. Mutual treats you kindly the next day, and the next, and the next, and the next. He holds you gently, cuddles with you at, in the night, and gives you baths and smiles at you with that bright, bright, happy smile. Like you're the only one that can ever make him so happy. His kisses are like ice, but gradually, you think they'll melt one day. You're trapped in his room, but you're technically free. Your wrists and ankles are unbound, and the doors are unlocked. Mutual goes to school every day, and you're free. If you think about it, one step outside the door, and you're free to leave and never come back. You don't leave. The plumium's still swinging. His house is frighteningly empty when he's not around. The shadows scream at you, and the floorboards creak under the way of ghosts, and the outside car honks make you jump in surprise. The real world, the outside world. You turn towards the windows, fingers itching to pull out the curtains to let sunlight hit your face. It feels like it's been years since you saw anyone but Mutro in their own haggard reflection in the mirror. You shudder. The loneliness grins maliciously. You shouldn't. He'll get angry. You shouldn't make him angry. 
The door clicks open and you jump to turn around, heart in your throat like a criminal caught red-handed, but Mutual doesn't seem suspicious. He greets you with a bright smile. Did he run home? I missed you. Your heart skips a beat at that. It's a relief. Relief, you tell yourself. As you open your arms to welcome him, Mutual laughs and throws himself into your arms, hard enough to throw both of you back onto the bed. His laugh is like a kid's, so carefree, sprinkled with pure, adulterated joy as he nuzzles against your neck before sighing in happiness. I'm so happy you're here, he says. Then an unlyingly threat there, you think. Or maybe you're overthinking. He's just glad. You probably are. Maybe you don't know. Where else would I be except here with you? Practice words. As long as Mutual happy, then you're safe. You have to keep him happy and satisfied with you. You'll, you'll be alright. Mutual grins up at you. Right, he says eagerly. No one else loves you like I do, right? Right. But the words catches in your throat. Mutual goes back to nestling against your neck. I'm caring of your response when his arms are around you like this. Today was so boring. Everyone at school is so dumb and incompetent. I can't stand them. I miss you so much when I was at school. Just don't make him mad. He'll still treat you like this, like someone precious and perfect. Just keep him happy. I miss you too, you said, quietly covering your hands through his hair. Mutual hums happily at this, like swinging up and down childishly as he props himself on his elbows. His face shines. Oh, but today wasn't all that bad. Guess what happened? What? Guess. His lips curve into a frown. You panic. Mind kicking into overdrive. Thoughts racing past. Guess how? So many things could have happened, but you don't know where to start. Oh god, you have to guess. Fingers lift your lips into a forced smile. Mitchell is still frowning as he forces you to smile. Your face is frozen, but you still hold that smile. Stop that, he says. That's not your smile. Smile better. You wanted to cry, not again, not again, not again. You take a steady breath and try to erase your panic thoughts with happier ones. Smooth out any remainments of your frown. A stiff silence where Mutual examines your smile. Your heart stops beating. Finally, he nods in satisfaction. And relief crashes over. It's so thick and it drags you underneath in its rocky waves. Your, lips, your limbs are still tense in a conscious effort to unwind. You're shaking. Mutual kisses your cheek and smiles sweetly. It's sickening sweet, like chocolate, spoiled, rotten, and turned bitter. His touch is so warm, but you're cold. Love you, YN, he tells you, and search your eyes for an answer. He looks forward to. Just don't make him angry, you think. He seeps away in your warmth, but now that you're cold, you don't need his heat no more. You lick your lips. Outside, someone shrieks in laughter, but here, everything is mute and safe for the mint eyes staring at you. You smile back. Your heart leaps in relief, and it sounds like infatuation. As long as you're happy, you're happy and safe. Maybe, hopefully, you don't know. I love you too, Mushiro.